Well, hello and welcome to Turning Point Online. It's my privilege to uh, share a message again, the second part in what uh, we're doing a series on the book of Deuteronomy, Blessed to be a Blessing. And last week I talked about the land is yours and I had three points that you've stayed long enough where you are. You need to break camp and you need to advance. And secondly, to remind you that God has given you this land. Go in and take possession and finally conquer and possess those promises. I hope that message blessed you. Now we're going to go into the second part of this message. And today I'm going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 4 and 5. So Deuteronomy chapter 4 and 5. And most of the verses that I'm going to be talking about are coming out of chapter 4. You know, I'm so blessed. I feel so blessed. But... Blessing comes from abiding in the ways of the Lord. Blessing comes from obedience. And I'm going to share that with you today. And my message today is in your blessing, don't forget. In your blessings, don't forget. And so just once again, a little background. The book of Deuteronomy is the children of Israel are paused right on the very edge of the promised land. Forty years later, then the time where they were going to go in the first time and Moses had got the 12 spies to go in and spy out the land. But because the people's unbelief and lack of trust, they began to complain and whinge and really felt like they were so small that they were unable to defeat the giants in the land. And so God was really cross with them because of their lack of trust. And as a result, they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years until all that generation had passed away, except for, yes, Joshua and Caleb, who were the two spies that said, we can do it. God is big and the people are small in comparison. So here they are back again, right at that place again on the plains of Moab, and Moses is reminding them from this book called the second law, Jute, meaning to the second law. And he's reinstating what he received from the Lord on Mount Sinai that was written down in the book of Exodus, Leviticus and the book of Numbers. Because this is a new generation. This is a new generation that needs to hear what God had promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when he called this very insignificant people with no land, no identity, no national identity, no civil um, legislations. He's called them and he's forming them. And now it's time for them to go in and to become that people. So Moses is reminding them of what God had already told them before. And this is the key to them, not only to be able to go in and possess land, but when, once they're in the land, to continue to see the blessings of God in your blessings, don't forget. Now, why did God choose this insignificant group of people? Why did he choose you? Why did he choose me? We know how imperfect we are, how insignificant we are. But God chose the children of Israel for that very reason, because they were small and insignificant. So that as they obeyed him, as they lived according to his decrees and commandments, that God's blessing would be poured into them and his blessings would be noticed by those around. His blessings would cause them to be such a blessed people that people would come from far and wide. The nations around would say, wow, there is no God like your God. And the God following Christianity would become contagious and people would be drawn to him. So Moses is talking to them again in Deuteronomy chapter 4. And so I just gave you a bit of a history here of why Deuteronomy was, re was written. Now I want you to remember four words. They all start with R because these are my points for summarizing up chapter 4. And it's really vitally important for us. That with the blessings that we have, where we've come from to where we are now, that we don't forget. So these four R's are remember, relay, recall and return. Remember, relay, recall and return. First of all, remember. And Moses is saying, 
remember what God has done for you. And he recounts all the way, even before they were in Egypt, he recounts all that God has done for them. And then he shares with them again with this generation who, of course, were the next generation, who were the descendants, who were the children, who perhaps didn't remember all the amazing things that God had done in rescuing them from Egypt. Of course, I remembered the manna and the quail and the water. They all could recall how God had provided for them, kept them healthy. Their clothes and their shoes didn't even wear out. But God is saying, when you come across the Jordan River, when you take possession, I want you to remember. I want you to never forget. And in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1, he starts this chapter by saying, Now, Israel, hear the decrees and laws I'm about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. So, follow them. And of course, what Moses is talking about is the Ten Commandments and the other, te the other commandments. And altogether, there's about 631 of them that are listed, but they're mostly summed up by the Ten Commandments. Let's see whether you can remember those. The first four are about God and their relationship with God, because he's forming them into this people with their own, their own uh, boundaries, their own identity. So the first of all is remember to put God first. Secondly, do not make any other idols or replace me with anything else. Third point is don't misuse my name, only use it for holy reverential purposes. And the fourth one is keep one day aside to spend it with me and to rest from the weariness and everyday toil of work. So they're the four about God. And the next six about our relationship with other people. First of all, honor your father and mother. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal. Do not lie and do not covet. In other words, do not want what others have because I am the Lord your God. I am going to provide for you everything that you need. You don't have to look at the Joneses next door, the compete with the Smiths. I am going to bless you with everything that you need. And he's saying, remember, when you were not a people, when you were nothing, I made you to be a people of God, the people called out. And because of that, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you understanding. I'm going to cause you to prosper. And I'm going to prolong your days that you're going to live. What an amazing promise God has for them. But what do they have to do? What do we have to do? Remember. And in Deuteronomy 4, 6 to 8, it says, Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is wise and an understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their God near them the way the Lord their God is near them whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have a righteous decrees and laws as the body of laws I am setting before you today? Follow them once again. Follow them. That word is there. Those words, follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land, the land the God of your ancestors is giving you. And so twice in just a few verses there, God is saying through Moses, follow them. Remember, 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 always remember who you are. Always remember where you've come from. Always remember to put me first in your life and the other Ten Commandments. So that's remember. The next one is relay. So relay is to pass it on, pass it on, relay. You know, when we think of a relay race, we're thinking of the baton that is passed from one to the other. I don't know whether you've ever competed in a relay race. I have, and you're standing there ready, 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 waiting for the person to run up and they pass a baton. You don't drop it. You want to continue to carry it on to the end of time, to the end of the race. And so Moses is saying, relay these things to your children and to your children's children. 
And so in Deuteronomy 4 verse 9, Moses is saying, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. And that's a challenge for all of us. We know how we got where we were now. We know the struggles, the obstacles, the answers to prayer, the breakthroughs, the miraculous intervention of God. But our children don't. We need to pass them on. Why do we do what we do? Why do we have what we have? We need to pass them on and teach our children. You know, God did not give us children so we could raise up children who don't love God and follow in his ways. And that takes time. It takes teaching and guiding and coaching and passing on to our children so that from generation to generation, the blessings of God can continue on. So relay what you have heard, what you have seen, what you have learned, what you have experienced and the blessings of God and the reason for it to the next generation and on and on from them. And the third hour is recall. You know, as you get along the path in that blessing, as you get into the promised land and you conquer it and you take possession of your parcel of land, as you build your houses, as you establish your gardens, as life is prospering for you, then recall, recall, recall. What does the word recall mean? The recall means to bring back to mind, return to a place, come back. And another word is to remember. So it's not the initial remembering and, you know, relaying it on, but it's continuing to recall. We know that as we go along, many things can crowd into our life. Many things can take our focus and become a priority to us. It could be the love of money and working hard so we don't have time to go to church anymore, to, to be involved in serving. It might be sport, it might be entertainment. There are so many things. TV, you know, can become much more important than going to that connect group or, you know, that growth group. Oh, I just want to watch the next, uh, you know, series in that episode. God is saying here, recall, come back to that place. And in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 32 to, to 33, and then I'm going to read verse 3 as well. It says here, Ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of their heaven to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking and lived? Remember where you were. Return to that place. How amazingly God was with you and for you. How he blessed you. In Deuteronomy 4 verse 3 it says, You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did. Don't forget it. Reflect and remind yourself. Do not leave God out of the picture. Remember those first four commandments. To put God first. Don't make anything else in your life, any graven image. Of course, you know, we don't have a Buddha sitting in our garden. We don't have statues around our houses. But in our Aussie culture here, there are many things that can replace God and cause apathy to flow in our lives. You know, there are many people that um, the places we came from, the countries that we came from, we were passionate about praying and fasting and reading God's word and, and being diligent in serving in our community and in our churches. And, you know, so many things can take the place of that. And slowly, slowly over time, our enthusiasm, our passion and our desire to serve God can be replaced by other things so so subtly and, and Moses is saying here come back don't forget recall what I have done for you and the last hour is return remember relay 
we call and return. You know, even as Moses was talking to them in chapter 4, he's saying, you know, when you build those houses, when you go into the land and the other nations are worshipping other idols, sadly, you also are going to be captivated by that. Sadly, some of you are going to be waylaid and led astray. Sadly, some of you are going to backslide. He's already preempting that. God is already preempting that. But God is saying, return back. When you cry out to me, well, let's read what Deuteronomy 4.30 says. And, and Moses is saying, you know, when you turn your back on God, when you begin to go other, after other idols, when you stop putting me first, when you make other graven images and put them before me, then God has to take his hands off you. The blessings will no longer flow. You'll be scattered. You'll be taken over by other nations. And But then in verse 30 it says, When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in the latter days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. That goes on to say, And God, who is a God of justice and mercy, as you cry out to him, he will be there for you. He will take you back. He will cut those things that have caused you distress off your life and the blessings will begin to flow again. But I want to encourage you, let's not get to that point. But maybe some who are listening today, you have wandered away. Maybe you have forgotten to put God first in your life. Maybe other things have taken your focus and priority. Maybe you have lost your first love and God is saying right now, I'm a God of mercy and compassion. As you call out to me, as you return to me, I will restore you. Maybe some of you have got distracted. Maybe you've got sidetracked. God is saying return. You know, in those blessings, even those blessings themselves can become distractions. We need a beautiful house. And we spend all our time making money to, to upgrade it or to get some beautiful furniture. Or we've got a lovely garden and we spend the weekends mowing the lawns and planting new plants and sculpturing our trees. You know, so many things rather than putting God first. You know, I guarantee you, like giving of our tithes to the Lord, when we put him first, when we put our time and our focus on him first, we'll have plenty of time for everything else because God's blessings will flow to us. So God is saying, return, return to me. And Moses is saying to them, by God, in Deuteronomy 4 verse 40, keep his commands and decrees which I'm giving you today so that it may go well for you and with your children after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. And I want to remind us that God wants you and me to be blessed so that others around can see that and can glorify God. So that you can be contagious and infectious for God. So that you can draw people to God. So that people can inquire for the reason, for the hope that's within you. And it's because of Jesus Christ and his blessing. And you can share that good news with others who don't have that. Let's not forget what we have. So Deuteronomy chapter 4 and 5 and, and chapter 5 goes on to reinforce the commandments and talk about them once again as Moses is talking to this next generation. We need to keep on speaking to the next generation. Don't assume that they know it all. We've experienced it. We've heard it. Now we need to pass on those stories, those miracles. You know, I love hearing my mum and dad when they were alive sharing about the amazing, wonderful miracles of God and what he'd done in their lives. And that brought such passion in my life to follow God. And now it's my responsibility to pass not only that to my children, but now more so to my grandchildren. We need to remember, relay, recall and return if we have wandered away. And I want to bring this back to the blessings that we have here at Turning Point. When I think about the land and the buildings that we have at Turning Point, Krim, we didn't always have that, as I was sharing last week. That was a miraculous provision of God. And, you know, when we purchased that land, we were 
a small and very impoverished, insignificant group of people. But God had chosen and called us. He'd given us a promise and he blessed us. And we were able to purchase 21 and a half acres. We were able to, by God's grace and with the help of many in a small congregation, to literally build the first part of the building on the land. And some of you weren't there when we did that. Some of you, you need to hear this story over and over again, like the next generation, the next generation coming into the promised land, needed to remember it wasn't easy. There were battles to be fought. There were spiritual obstacles to overcome. There was money to be raised, but God blessed us blessed us so we could be a blessing so that the next generation could live in that blessing and continue to flourish and enlarge that blessing so turning point you know we didn't have everything that we have now in the past and so we need to pass those stories on and not forget but remember where we've come from and come to God with a heart of thankfulness and gratefulness knowing that he's done it before and he can do it again God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. What about the history of your life? I know for me, you know, I came from a very insignificant middle child farming family. And, you know, there wasn't really much going for us. We lived in a really quite remote place on the edge of the Tulangi forestry. But, you know, God sees us wherever we are and as our hearts are set on him he chooses us as insignificant we are he pours his blessings into us he gives us boldness and courage and he raises us up i thank god for all that i have and all that has happened through filling my life we have been so blessed but you know when i think of my ancestors my great great grandfather and mother they came from a place called Prussia in Germany. And why did they come to Australia? They came here for religious freedom because back there in Prussia, there was religious persecution for them as Lutherans at that time because of the decrees of the king trying to clamp down on uh, making a whole country religion. And so my forefathers, they came to Australia seeking freedom. And many of you, came to Australia. You came from war-torn, uh, poverty-stricken nations. You came for a better life. You came for more opportunities. And as you've come here, many of you have been able to work hard, get a job, work hard, and purchase yourself beautiful houses and furnish them with beautiful furniture and buy those cars and, and continue to see great material blessing. And even to use that to bless the cause, your relations and families back overseas who've been able to, unable to come here. But what I want to really encourage you is don't get sidetracked. Those blessings came because you put God first and he has much more for you. Don't get sidetracked. Remember to put God first because God wants to challenge us with this message. And I really really want to challenge you in your blessing don't forget keep God alive in your life he's got so much more for you he's not finished with you and me yet he doesn't want us to be like the dead sea why is a dead sea dead because a river runs into it and it doesn't go out the other side it just stays stagnant and it becomes salty and nothing can grow there because it doesn't flow out. You know, God doesn't bless you so that you can become like the Dead Sea. In fact, if you stay like that, you'll become stagnant, you'll become polluted and there'll be no new life. Nothing will be able to flourish and grow. God has blessed you so you can be a conduit of blessing. As it flows into you, you can flow out to others. Using your homes to bless others using your cars to bless others, using your money to build the kingdom of God and share the good news of Jesus with others. So I just want to really encourage you. You know, there may be some of you listening here today, you don't feel like God has answered 
any of your prayers you don't feel blessed well i'm going to pray a prayer of blessing upon your life because god does want you to be blessed so you can be a blessing not only to your community but to the nations around you there's so much more for us to do and maybe some of you you've got a little sidetracked yep sure you started off the right way and you're very blessed but you've got a bit waylaid maybe even with the lockdown you know you've got a little bit complacent and apathetic and you know god is sort of moved to the back seat and god wants you to be hot for him it actually says in the bible i'd rather you be hot or cold not lukewarm if you're lukewarm i'll spit you out of my mouth they're very strong words we know that it, something that's lukewarm is insipid it's it's not we either want a hot or a cold drink not many of us want a lukewarm one and so I, I really want to encourage you to stir up that desire to serve God, to pray, to read his word, to fast, to serve in the church and to serve in your community as the, uh, the hands and the feet of Christ. And if there's some of you here today that you've never given your life to the Lord, I want to pray a prayer today so that the Father can welcome you into his kingdom today and the blessings of God can start to flow in your life. So let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that encourages us. We thank you, Lord, that we see here in the book of Deuteronomy that you want us to be a called out, set apart, blessed people so that we can be a shining light for others. Lord, if there's people listening today and they have not experienced the blessings of God, we pray today, Lord God, will be the beginning of seeing prayers answered and the blessings flow as they put you first in their life, Lord. Unblock those wells so that it can flow, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those who may have got sidetracked. We pray, Lord God, that they will recall once again the goodness of God in their life and that they will return and the works of the enemy, Lord God, that has stopped that blessing flowing, Lord God, in the way that it should have, Lord, will be stopped. And as they return, that you will stir their heart up again to be passionate and hot for you, Lord God. Lord, if there's any that have not ever known you, Lord God, they've never invited you to be their Lord and Saviour. Lord, I just pray that right now as I pray this prayer, that they will pray along. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me so that, Lord God, through me coming to the foot of the cross and accepting the work that Jesus did, through me saying, God, I'm sorry for all the wrong things that I've done, for the sins that I've committed, I ask you through the work that Jesus did on the cross to forgive me of my sins, to give me a fresh start, to come into my life and to set me on a path of blessing so that I may be blessed to be a blessing. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that from this day forth, I will have you living in my life. I will live my life for you and I will put you first. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, why don't you go on to our website, www.turningpointchurch.org. And there's a place there where it says made a decision. Click on it. There's some resources there for you. You can send us an um, email, send us a prayer request. But I just want you to remember you are blessed to be a blessing. But in your blessing, do not forget. So God bless you. Have a great week and see you again soon.